Tonight, a dispute between a tenant and landlord that involves your tax dollars. Call for Action's Keith King explains what happened to get one landlord terminated from the public housing program. Keith. Mark and Krista, the public housing program is set up to give low-income families a clean and affordable place to live. Once the landlord and the public housing agency agree on the amount of rent, the landlord cannot go to the tenant and charge more money. Tonight, one local landlord can no longer rent to low-income families and receive your tax dollars. Candace Moore is a single mother of six who's part of the public housing system. When it comes to her landlord... Right now, at this point, I'm just like, people need to know about her. Moore is speaking out and getting action. How would you describe what's happened? I think this was a landlord that, that got greedy. In July of last year, Moore and her family moved into this Grandview rental. This woman, Edith Hinton, owns it. Ms. Hinton, can I talk to you real quick? Keith King, call for action. Hinton lives in this Leewood home. Until recently, she qualified to rent her properties to low-income families. Here's how it works. A tenant, like Moore, finds a place to rent. The Kansas City Housing Authority enters into a contract with the landlord. Both the agency and landlord agree on monthly rent and security deposits. In this case, the Housing Authority set rent at $1,045. Moore pays a full month's rent as a security deposit than $41 a month in rent. Using federal tax dollars, the housing authority pays Hinton the rest. But Moore alleges Hinton required her to pay a higher security deposit and higher rent. Instead of just $41, Moore says she paid her landlord nearly $600 a month. And with what housing authority was kicking in, that brought the total rent to $1,600. Moore says Hinton would only accept cash. I um, was only getting unemployment payments and um, uh, child support and pretty much almost every dime I received I had to give to her. Frustrated, Moore stopped paying rent in mid-September and reported her landlord to the housing authority. There was a complaint by the, the client saying that they thought they were being asked for, to pay too much money. In January, Hinton tried to evict her tenant. Court records show Hinton claimed Moore owed more than $3,000 in rent, even though Moore moved in six months prior and as approved by the housing authority, should only pay $41 a month. An eviction results in a public housing tenant getting kicked off the program. Hinton lost. The judgment handed down in March determined Moore actually paid $1,660 towards the security deposit, more than what's required by the lease. Hinton appealed, claiming the previous judge made mistakes. In June, Hinton lost again. This time, the judgment, based on the credibility of witnesses, found that Moore actually overpaid Hinton more than $1,300 in rent between August 2011 and June 2012. Based on that judgment, we then were able to act um, against Ms. Hinton for collecting too much money. Through an open records request, Call for Action obtained these documents from the Housing Authority's own investigation, a lease provided by Hinton to the Housing Authority. Only look at this. Under security deposit, which should read $1,045, a higher amount is written in. Next to that, the words, completed September 5th, 2011. This letter sent in June to Hinton from the Housing Authority says the lease shows an altered amount, indicating full amount was paid September 5th. And there's this, a handwritten ledger Hinton provided to the Housing Authority showing more paid an even higher amount towards the security deposit. Edith Hinton didn't help her own case. No. Can I talk to you real quick, please, Ms. Hinton? I tried to speak with Edith Hinton at the Jackson County Courthouse. She did not want to answer my questions. Hinton also refused our request for an on-camera interview and our repeated request for a statement before this story aired. She's done so much to me and my family. I'm very upset that she's um, she's gotten away with it for so long. Hinton can no longer receive public money for her rental properties. The Housing Authority letter to Hinton states she materially violated the housing assistance payment contract. She collected more funds from the tenant than allowed. And she submitted false documentation in an attempt to justify her actions. The letter in stating the agency will not accept any future requests from Hinton and suspend all housing assistance payments effective July 31st. Why should taxpayers care about what's happened with this particular case? It is taxpayers' funds that we're using, and it's our obligation to make sure that that landlord is receiving only the amounts that they're entitled to under the contract. Other public housing families have been affected by Hinton's termination from the program. Those who rent from her have been notified she is no longer part of the program. 
they have received notice in time to move. And the housing authority director tells me that this is rare for a landlord to be terminated from the public housing program. And the court ruled Candace more overpaid in rent. Will she try to collect that? Well, uh, to do that, she will have to go back to court. And this is something that she has been discussing with her attorney. This has been a very long legal battle for her. And bottom line, she just doesn't know if she wants to continue mm. it right. at this point. All right. Keith King, thank you. Sure.